So first, if you can introduce yourself, please. Uh, my name is Pedro Noe. I'm the creative director of Ed Buster's magazine. And I've um, been working with them for about eight years now. So how do you explain nowadays to a young guy what's Ed Buster? Adbusters is part of uh, Adbusters Media Foundation and um, it's, it's best known by its magazine. It's been going on about <clears throat> uh, pretty much uh, since 1989. And uh, uh, it's a magazine that started out discussing <clears throat> environment issues and it went quickly moved on to what is called mental environment issues. So the same way we can pollute the environment, we can pollute our minds. And we started by creating Coter gems and subvertisements playing around with existing ads and modifying them as a way to sort of create counter narratives. So, and, and I guess the, the biggest, uh, uh, most successful campaign we created was Occupy Wall Street when uh, we created a poster in our issue in the 2011. And it was a call out for people to come in and occupy the financial heart of the globe uh, in New York. And uh, it really took a life of, of its own, and the whole Occupy movement was born out of this poster that we designed. And since then, we sort of been busy producing books, we're producing videos, we're producing a lot of different sorts of cultural material to discuss different narratives opposed to the endless growth, profit, accumulation, money, and into a sort of more community base. How can we? What are we doing in planet Earth as as people, as a species? What? Uh, where are we heading, you know? What are we doing with all of this? And for all the Adbusters fans, we have like always, I think, one question. How are, what is the backstage of Adbusters? What's happening behind? How is the work process? How you talk to each other? How people is sending, how are you, like? It's, Adbusters, it's, 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 it's from the gut, if I can kind of explain, you know? It's a mess. I mean, creatively speaking, it's, it's, it's confusing, we're changing things all the time. We, we, we create covers and then we get sick of it and then we change things. It's, it's <clears throat> we never settled, you know, it, it feels like we're always looking for something. We, we, we're looking for the new tone. And can, can art and design shift the foundations of the society that we live in? Is that possible? You know, what is the tone? What's the mood of the reality that we live today? Can we change that? Can we change the way how information flows in the society? You know, can we, can we make it be a bit more humane? You know, be a bit more inspire people. You know, to actually create change. And I think it's it's an ongoing battle. You know, we 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 find new paths, and then they get take over by corporations and by by fascist movements. You know, and I guess it's a. It's an ongoing battle. It's the meme wars that we're fighting, you know? So I guess it's just part of the game, I guess. And in that game and in all that mess, what kind of people is behind? Oh, there's a, a, the, the, the actual team. It's super small. There's about five of us. <clears throat> it's actually uh, mostly women. And uh, um, they're very young. <clears throat> and uh, um, uh, Kale is the editor and the founder. He's still going. Very old guy and he has more energy than all of us combined, you know, and, and super passionate about what he's doing. And, uh, but at the same time, it's about enjoying ourselves, you know, and a lot of times that we're creating things, there's a lot of moments where we look at things and we kind of go, I don't know why, but it's working. There's no rationality behind it. You know, a lot of times it's, it's to do with, with trusting your gut. And that's, that's like letting it go. Letting it go, it's, it's not easy. It's like a, a muscle that needs to be flexed. You have to practice every day. And especially with design, that it's all about having control. And all of a sudden, you don't have control. And, 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 and for a few uh, uh, platforms, this is great. It's fantastic to be working on a platform that we allow to do ourselves, in that kind of sense. Practically, it's chaotic, but it's, 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 it pays off. You know, it's, it's really fulfilling about uh, the, the results you get, getting to know people and getting to hear the, the thoughts and everything is always super, super important, you know. So I guess be part of this, this event, it's, it's always so gratifying to actually, you know, come here and eye to eye, meet people and talk about, you know, like the work we've been doing, you know, it's always really, really important. So you just 
start of about 1977, Macron West Star Wars, right? <laughs> and you arrived today. So, what the fuck is happening today? <laughs> That's the big question. I have no idea what the fuck is happening today. But we can see some signs. I think in 1977, it's a good year in terms of symbols that I kind of picked that you have like dystopian views, you know, like the, the Lockheed Martin doing like a stealth airplane. But at the same time, you have like the force be with you with Star Wars. You have Sex Pistols declaring that there's no future, you know, and at the same time, you have like Close Encounters, you know, and Voyager, you know, that sends off this, this space probe to outer space and you know, representing humanity, you know. But back then, uh, the world was different, you know, and, and, and I think that the most problematic views I have with today is that today everything becomes a business. Education is a business. Health is a business. It's not really about people anymore. All the sin is about money. And that's the major heart of the project we're doing here as, as a species. How do we explain ourselves as a species is finance and economics. And that's at the heart of the center and everything serves that. You know, and we forgot about humanity and I think it's we, we have to keep fighting, you know, it's, it's, it's not just something you, you, I don't know, at least for me, you wake up and do your thing and, I don't know, go make money, don't see your kids, and then you're 50 years old with cancer, and you ask yourself, oh, what did I do in my life, you know? I think uh, 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 people are starting to ask questions, the narrative is starting to expand, you know, like the Pope <laughs> says that capitalism is a bad thing, bad guys in films are bankers and capitalists and greedy people. So in a sense, it's, it's interesting that the narrative is sort of expanding. And I guess part of it, Adbus has been part of this sort of creating by expanding it's like counter narratives that we're sort of creating. But we're still searching, you know, we're still like looking, what's next, you know, where are we going? How can we make this deeper? Is it economics? What's the next level? You know, how do we actually go with this? I mean, look up, you have Blockupy, you know, you have Rojava, you have uh, uh, a movement in Madrid, you have fantastic new projects coming up, you know. And I don't think it's one project, it's all the projects. It's like, things are so bad, anything counts, anything goes, you know. I don't know, if you think there was this one guy who decided to do this dance in his apartment, and the next thing, you know, you have this thing called Harling Shake, and it's spread all over the world and everybody's fucking dancing with it. Maybe it's a dance the next thing, <laughs> you know, maybe it's the ice bucket thing challenge, for example, that we should do. Anything goes, you know, we can use of all the means that we have and we do have the power of actually one person coming up with an idea, get modified by a different one and then gets hijacked by something different. And with this, we kind of create change. There is something really powerful about us holding an object in our hands that can really shift things and really change things. So let's stop paying Candy Crush <laughs> and get busy on, on doing what's, what's, what's important right now, I guess. So in the middle of that, which is the role of creativity? I think creativity should be dangerous. I think creativity should be, should be the one thing that uh, 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 the state, corporations, institutions, and media can't count on it. You know, it's... It's the one thing that can create new protests, new ways to see, you know, it can, it's the one thing that can actually make people feel uh, um, emotional. And this is super important. It's not about just the act, the performance. It's about emotional narratives. We have to get emotional. People don't care about facts anymore. Facts don't come with me f with another fucking scientific report. That doesn't count anymore. We need storytelling. Fictions and jokes, they spread faster than truths. We should be using that, whatever means we have, to sort of spread that. I mean, look at Handmaid's Tale, look at you know, all these different narratives. They discuss what's happening today in a fiction form. This is amazing. We should be doing that more, you know? And you can do that in your own bedroom. You know, you can come up with these different ideas. Oh, let's go out and paste these posters all over. Maybe you don't need to go out and paste the posters. Maybe you just do a Photoshop and the image is enough. One image could be enough, you know? So I guess it's an exercise, you know? And we have to remember what we're doing, what we're doing, you know? We have to keep fighting. We have to keep kissing. We have to keep doing whatever we're doing because, you know, it's a celebration, you know? I, 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 I'm not part of the protest, the fan 
I, I, I like to have fun, you know, to live a little, you know, and I guess you should allow yourselves to be happy, you know, when you can. I mean, it's one shot in one life, you know, you, you don't get a rehearsal, you know, you have to do it what you believe in. And, and I think so should people out there, you know, and, and, and the moment right now, it's really dark, it's really tough, but that's part of us as well. Darkness exists together with light. It's all part of one thing, you know, so we should be strong enough. And I think we are th strong enough, you know, to, to go through, you know, and, and, and life goes on, I guess. And today, you have like all, you have like all that audience, like most of them, designers. What about the role of design? Well, <coughs> design used to be about products and services. And design now dictates context and culture. It goes much further than that, you know. Uh, um, uh, design needs to be about good things or bad things. This is good, this is bad, this is beautiful, this is ugly. That doesn't count anymore. Context is everything. There are no borders. Everything is global. You know, we have to really think of design in terms of strategies. We have to learn how when you, upon designing a chair, as an excuse of designing a chair or designing a poster, really what you, what's behind of that is changing legislation, for example. You know, it's exposing something, you know. We have to learn how to work the memes, the virals, you know. We have to be busy using creativity to create new forms of protest, new ways to actually inspire people to think in, 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 in fantastic new ideas to be part of a protest, to, to go up against. I mean, should we throw the right? Should we throw the fascists? I don't know. You know, it's a question to sort of be brought. But I think it's, it's interesting that design is already shifting from that, you know. The role of design is getting richer and richer, and people are starting to understand that it's, it's about a whole equation and not just one single idea, you know. But I do ask myself, should that be part of the curriculum, you know? Adbus is usually part of the curriculum in design schools. I wish it was part of the curriculum in economic schools, you know. It's where we can kind of like expand, you know. I was having lunch one day back in Brazil, and it was a very posh place, and these two guys, very well-dressed up and corporate-looking people, they were having lunch, and one of them turned to the other one and said, man, can you believe that Greenpeace was, was right all this time? We're really making the planet, like, going to bunkers with it, you know? And that's really funny, you know, because it's kind of like the narrative that we've been saying. We've been saying this shit for a long time. The future doesn't compute. This is not gonna work out. And it's 2018 and you have like this shitstorm scenario, you know? I'm not bragging or anything, but I think it's important, you know, to where are we heading? You know, there's a famous Chinese um, phrase that says, if you don't change the course of direction, you're likely to end up where you're headed. So, it kind of says a lot about capitalism, doesn't it? Yeah. So, we, I think we know your real future with us. I think the first time I said future was in Adbusters. Apocalypse, but how do you imagine your sons in 15 years time? Well, it's going to be tough for them, you know? It's going to be tough for sort of, uh, uh, um, for future generations to come. I think we have to talk about resilience. We have to talk about uh, 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 to believe what's wrong, what's right, you know, in terms of, of, of humanity, in terms of me, what I think is wrong and right. We have to teach him how to sort of uh, get used to change and maybe teach them how to use a gun. <laughs> I'm not sure. That's a lot of people, you know. Maybe I'll teach him how to do first aid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.